What is up guys, Karma Medic here, and welcome back to another dose. Welcome to Cooking with Karma Medic, episode three. If you're new to the channel, hi, my name is Nasser, and I'm now a third year medical student studying at King's College London. I usually make videos all about medical school, studying, productivity, and things like that. But every now and again, I like to show you guys what it is that I cook and how it is that I cook. This is a little bit strange to say out loud, but this will be my seventh year at university. And for all the years that I have been at university, I've cooked almost all of my meals myself. And that's because I believe that meal prep or cooking your own meals should be fast, it should be easy, healthy, and also the time that you spend in the kitchen should be able to feed you for many days going forward. And that's why I cook in bulk, it's one of the main themes of my cooking and it's something that I always do. So what we're gonna be cooking today is salmon with a side of quinoa and vegetables. I'm gonna show you guys the secret sauce that I use on my salmon, a couple extra garnishings and things like that. And then I'm also gonna make a salad on the side to make sure that we get in as many vegetables as possible. Now one of the most important principles for me when it comes to cooking is efficiency. The faster I can cook, and get my meals ready, then the more time I have to do other things in my day. So it's very important for me to do everything in the right order and also to maximize the amount of dead time. Usually the longest part of any meal prep is cutting up and preparing the vegetables, so that's what we're gonna do first. Now usually the vegetables have a little bit of prep to do, you need to cut them into smaller pieces or cut off the stalks and things like that, but the ones that I bought today are already ready so I can skip that step. Now for broccoli and asparagus specifically, you want to cook them slowly over time because they tend to be quite a hard vegetable and so it's better to cook them slowly rather than fry them really quickly. Usually I use olive oil to cook just about everything in the house, but recently I've discovered that if I cook the asparagus and broccoli with butter, it actually tastes so much better. Now, as far as oil or butter in order to fry your vegetables, you guys can add as much as you want. Obviously, the more you add, the less healthy your dish is going to become, but it's up to you and you guys can find a personal balance that you enjoy. So I'm gonna turn on the heat to something fairly low, like a four or five out of 10, so I can slowly cook these guys over time. Now, in the meantime, I'm gonna start preparing the salmon. Because I've started to cook the vegetables and now I'm gonna prepare the salmon, I know that I'm gonna need to put the salmon in the oven fairly soon, so I'm gonna start heating it up as well. So the oven settings that I use is I just turn this down here to the one with a fan. Basically, I just want the heat to come from everywhere, not only from the top or the bottom. And then I turn the temperature to 180 degrees, and that's usually good enough. All right, so as you can see, the butter has started to melt now. You can move that around evenly along the base of this big pan. And basically, I just want to lay everything down to hopefully get as much surface area with the pan as possible. Obviously, you can't do that if you're cooking as many vegetables as I am, but that's okay. I'll rotate them and flip them as we go along. Now, because not all the vegetables are touching the bottom of the pan, I'm gonna add a little more butter over the top that I'm eventually gonna mix in once it heats up, and that way I can hopefully evenly get everything to cook. All right, now let me show you guys how it is that I cook the salmon. So like I said before, the salmon is gonna get cooked in the oven, and the way that we do that is we build these little boats out of aluminum foil to put the salmon in, and then we can drizzle on all the sauce that we want. So I'm gonna try to make the boats big enough to fit two pieces of salmon at a time. Now, Alexia is actually the one who told me how to do this. Don't ask me what the method is. She makes them much better than me, but I'm just gonna do my very best. So like I said, Alexia makes these so much better than me. But the idea is that you wanna have this little enclosure that you can add the salmon and the sauce on, and then you can close it so that the salmon can cook nice and evenly inside. All right, so we've got our two boats now, and I think it's time to make the sauce. So how I make the sauce that I add onto the salmon is the following. First of all, you're gonna need a lot of soy sauce. And by a lot, I mean a lot. This sauce is also what you can drizzle on at the end over your quinoa or your rice vegetables. It's what brings the whole dish together. All right, now after you've added the soy sauce, the secret ingredient is honey. Honey just absolutely makes this dish taste so good. Gives it that little sweet taste that you want as well. So drizzle in a bunch of honey in there. And then last but not least, sesame seeds. This is also just one of those small touches that makes the dish taste so much better. I highly recommend you guys try it out if you haven't before. I'm personally a big fan of sesame seeds, so I'm gonna add a bunch, but you guys can add as much as you want. Starting to cook along, like I said, nice and slowly, not doing it too fast letting all those really tough, strong fibers break down slowly, slowly. All right, so that beeping was the oven, which means the oven is ready, which is good, because we're almost ready with the salmon. All right, so now you want to take this sauce, mix it really well. Basically, you want to get that honey. It won't really fully dissolve, but you want to get it mixed in with the, with the soy sauce as much as possible. Ah, oh, so, so, so good. All right, so now let's bring out that tray that we had with the two boats. Let's cut open this salmon box real quick. 
And now because we touched the raw meat with that knife, we need to get it rid of it. We need to put it in the sink. All right. And we don't want to use these tongs to touch the salmon because they've touched raw meat. So we need another set of tongs. I'm going to do two salmons per little boat. It's important to keep moving the asparagus and the broccoli around just to make sure that it doesn't like get burned or stuck to the bottom of the pan. And you want the ones that were previously at the top to get down to the bottom so everything's evenly cooked. They're getting cooked quite nicely. The butter is really helping them get this glistening shine that you see here. All right, so back to the salmon. It's time to finally drizzle on that sauce. Now I like to make sure that I get the sauce actually on the salmon meat, not only on the skin or on the bottom. So once I make sure I've gotten enough sauce on top of the actual salmon, I'll just take the rest of the sauce and split it between the two boats. Now because we're cooking in these boats, because it's closed, all that evaporation is gonna help steam it and it's gonna taste a lot better than if we were just frying it. And of course it's healthier because you're not using oils and things like that. All right, so now let's close these boats, give them a good seal, well, as best as we can anyway. So since we know the oven is ready to go, we can just throw them straight in. All right. Really depends how much you need to cook it, how long it's gonna cook for. I tend to do something between 12 and 20 minutes. So I'll start at like 16 minutes and then check on them. And then I'll check one of them, see if it's cooked all the way through to how I like it. And then if it still needs some more, I can just throw it back in. So I'm gonna set a quick timer for 16 minutes. And while the salmon's cooking away in the oven, I wanna give a quick shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Make 2020 the year where you explore new skills, deepen your passions, and increase your creativity using Skillshare's online classes. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes covering pretty much any topic so you can learn anything that you want. They've got short classes which fit around your busy routine, which is really important for me because as you know, I try and do a lot of things in a single day. They offer classes designed for real life so you can learn about cooking like we were today or how to take amazing Instagram photos, how to increase your creativity, just anything that you can think of. A class that I'm currently taking is called Social Media for the Creative Entrepreneur and it's teaching me how to increase engagement across my social platforms and figure out this sort of YouTube creator, social media influencer position that I found myself in. If you're interested in Skillshare and want to explore your creativity, you can click the links in the description down below and get two months of the premium membership for free. All right, now back to the cooking. Now in the meantime, if you're cooking rice or quinoa like I am today, that's gonna take about 20 minutes, so we should get started on that. Now quinoa or rice is probably the easiest thing in the world to make. You literally just throw it all into a pot and then you cover the quinoa or rice with water until the water covers the quinoa with about this much of your finger. It's something like two centimeters, yeah, one and a half to two centimeters. Then you put it on the stove and set it to the highest temperature your stove will go until the water boils, and then you turn it down to about a four or a five, cover it and wait 20 minutes and it's done. All right, so hopefully you guys can see over there, I've got the quinoa cooking. It's gonna take about 20 minutes to be fully ready. And then the vegetables over here, they're basically ready, but I'm just gonna leave them on a low heat to stay warm until everything else is finished. While we're waiting for all of that, we can just make a quick salad. And I try and keep my salads as simple as possible I just put some sort of leaf like rocket or spinach and then add a couple of tomatoes, olive oil, balsamic vinegar, and it's good to go. And yeah, there you go. There's a salad that took about a minute and a half to make. It increases the amount of vegetables that you eat in your day, keeps you healthy, and it's just a good thing to add to your daily meals if you can. Let's check on the salmon. All right, let's see what we've got over here. I'm gonna open the bigger one, the fatter one, and if that's cooked, then the smaller one is cooked too. All right, perfect. All right, so I guess I can start with the vegetables. They're all pretty much done now. Put those on the side. And now that the quinoa's done, we can just plate that up as well. And then last but not least, I'm gonna bring on the salmon. I haven't managed to get it in one, one big piece, but that's all right. And then the last thing that I do is just drizzle on some of this sauce, give it some more flavor. I like to put it on wherever I can. All right, and that is it. That's the whole plate done. I'm pretty excited to eat it. Now, usually I would have my friend or my sister taste the food so that you guys could get a second opinion to know if my cooking is actually good or not. But unfortunately, nobody is home today. So I'm gonna have to taste it all by myself and give you guys as much of an unbiased opinion as I possibly can. I'll do my very best. So that's the final dish. We've got the salmon, the quinoa, the asparagus, and the broccoli. And then we've just got a small salad salad on the side. We're gonna put something on Netflix, sit down and eat this meal, and then I'll let you guys know my official unbiased verdict.
All right, guys, let me tell you. Let me tell you for real. All right, the salmon, the soy sauce, the honey, the sesame seeds, honestly, very, very, very good. I personally, this is one of my favorite dishes that I make. Then the broccoli and the asparagus. I wish I'd cooked it at a slightly higher temperature. So going back, I would probably cook it at about a six, just so it gets a little bit more tender. But being cooked in the butter made it taste really, really good as well. Of course, you can use olive oil if that's what you prefer. And then the quinoa, pretty standard. I like to use tri-color quinoa because I think it adds a little bit more flavor and texture to the dish, but you can use rice or any other quinoa that you want. And then when I drizzled the sauce on top of everything, I think that's what tied it all together. Personally, I really like the dish. I wish I had one of you guys try it, honestly, just so you guys could give an unbiased rating. My recommendation is that you try out this dish, try it with the sauce on the salmon, and I think you'll really, really like it. Anyways, I think that is it for me for this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed another episode of Cooking with Karma Medic. If you did, please do leave a like on this video and subscribe to my channel to see more content from me in the future. I hope you've enjoyed, hope you're having a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next one. Peace!